Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you here today at the OBEC Secretariat. The 168th meeting of the OBEC conference starts now. I would like to invite His Excellency, President of the conference, Dr. Amoniel Kechiko, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources of Nigeria, to deliver his opening speech. Your Excellency Dr. Kachiko, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning all. Uh, first let me uh, express my gratitude uh, to all of you, all the ministers and delegation members who have taken time to attend. This is very good attendance and, and, and I'm sure that we'll have very positive deliberations uh, during this period. Um, uh, I also want to seize the opportunity um, to thank um, the Secretariat, led by the Secretary General, uh, for the excellent arrangements that have been done uh, for all of us uh, to enable us to have a, a very uh, problem-free meeting. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure this morning to welcome you all to Vienna for the 168th meeting of the OPEC conference. I'm honored to represent Nigeria as its head of delegation and to serve, as OPEC, to serve OPEC as president of this conference. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of heads of delegation and the OPEC Secretariat to welcome His Excellency Eulogio Del Pino, the new, People's, uh, the new People's Minister of Petroleum and Mining for Venezuela, uh, His Excellency Carlos Pareja Januzeli, the new Minister of Hydrocarbons of Ecuador, and His Excellency Anas Khalid Al Sali, Kuwait's Deputy Prime Minister, and the country's new Acting Minister of Oil, all of whom are attending the conference for the first time as heads of their country's delegation. I only need to add myself to my attending for the first time. I would also like to extend our sincere appreciation uh, to their predecessors in office for their valuable contributions, uh, the contributions that they've made uh, as they worked for this organization. And those uh, predecessors include His Excellency Engineer Pedro Maziralde Pervon of Ecuador, His Excellency Dr. Ali Saleh Al Omar of Kuwait, and His Excellency Azrubal Chavez of Venezuela. We wish them every success in the future. It is also my privilege uh, to welcome His Excellency Suleiman Said, the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources of Indonesia, uh, who is here representing his country as it reactivates its OPEC membership today after a seven-year suspension. We welcome you back. Your Excellency, and look forward to fruitful collaboration in the future. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the six months since the conference last convened in Vienna, we have witnessed continued volatility in the global oil market. Prices have dropped in some cases. Um, obviously, prices have hovered from the $60 that was the average then to something uh, in thresholds of the 40s in November. Um, Obviously, this has raised a lot of pricing concerns uh, amongst member countries and non-member countries. But uh, like many of us, I am optimistic that despite this volatility, we will find some solution that helps us stabilize the marketplace. OPEC has been monitoring this situation very closely, and these issues will be the focus of our discussions here today as we consider the developments of the last six months and the outlook for the next year. Taking a look at the economy, global economic growth in 2015, is set to be about 3.1 percent. This is slightly lower than that forecast at the last meeting of the conference in June of this year, mainly due to a deceleration in some emerging and developing countries. Next year looks brighter, with global growth forecasts to be 3.4 percent. World oil demand in 2015 will grow by 1.5 million barrels per day, up from 1 million barrels in 2014. Next year, we foresee growth of 1.3 million barrels per day to average 94.1 million barrels per day, with most of this growth coming from non-OECD countries. 
As far as supply is concerned, non-OPEC countries will continue to see significantly reduced production growth as compared to past years. In fact, in 2016, we anticipate a contraction in non-OPEC oil supply. And in this down one trend stems mainly from the impact of investment cutbacks, a lot of oil companies are cutting back in terms of their investments, and the drop in U.S. tight oil output, which has been declining since May of this year. This is clearly illustrated by the drop in the number of newly drilled wells and the reduction of half of active drilling wells. These developments indicate the onset of a more balanced market in 2016 with demand for OPEC crude expected to rise by 1.2 million barrels per day to average between 30.8 and 31 million barrels per day for the year. A balanced and stable market will be of crucial importance in the years ahead to ensure continued investment in the industry as it gears up to meet the world's bargaining energy needs. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our deliberations here today will, as always, be centered on how to enhance market stability which benefits all stakeholders and contributes to global economic growth. This can be achieved only through the concerted effort of all stakeholders, OPEC and non-OPEC, who each with everybody doing their path. Dialogue and collaboration with consumers, non-OPEC producers, oil companies and investors are essential in reaching our common goal of a more orderly oil market. In 2015, we have seen positive examples of this, including two technical meetings between OPEC and non-OPEC countries and the Asian Ministerial Energy Roundtable, which was held in Qatar in November. OPEC has also held bilateral dialogues with Russia and China this year. And later this month, the OPEC-India uh, Energy Dialogue uh, will have its first meeting. So we continue to reach out to non-OPEC producers uh, to find stability in this market. OPEC also remains committed to doing its part in protecting the environment and supporting sustainable development. In fact, as I speak, OPEC and its member countries are taking part in the climate change negotiation which is currently held in Paris. Our goal at these meetings is to bring effective and sustained implementation of UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. This, however, can only be attained through comprehensive, transparent, inclusive, and country-driven negotiations that account for the interests of all parties involved. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this industry is one that lives in cycles. It has seen hard days on many occasions in the past, and each time it has grown resilient. With this in mind, we are confident that true collaboration, innovative thinking, uh, useful dialogue, and determination our challenges of today can be transformed into opportunities of tomorrow. So we're very positively bullish on these issues. Thank you for your attention.